Hey folks, this is Nod, and we are mucking around in X-Plane. Okay, today I want to talk to you guys about flying tasks in gliders in X-Plane. What is this all about? Well, if you go to the glider competition wiki Wikipedia website, it'll explain what uh, flying tasks is all about. And it's uh, there's a history about it in the present day, and basically what it amounts to is you take your glider up and you uh, fly around a bunch of specific turn points which are just GPS locations on the map and you uh, just sort of fly around it's kind of like a, a car going around a race course except there's no there's no track of course with flying so you actually fly from one uh, turn point to the other and it's called a task and you get to like do it and it's a challenge and it makes it interesting and uh, and if you want to you can time yourself and brag to your buddies so if we pop over to the explain.org uh, website we will find in the gliders section, there will be a link in the description, uh, there's a tasks section here where people have uploaded tasks for us to fly in X-Plane. Actually, I, I, I've uploaded a bunch of these, not here you'll see, but other people have done it too. There's a whole bunch of uh, people have done it. I encourage you guys to post your tasks if you're into that sort of thing. But anyway, let me show you what one looks like. Uh, let's say, let's pick my uh, Lake Tahoe task here. And there's a whole bunch of like gibberish here you're going to have to sort of pay attention to. but. Um, Here's a task on the map. So here's Lake Tahoe. This is our starting position here. And that location is listed here uh, on the airports. This is the airport that you start at. And you basically just fly around this course here. And, uh, and you get to the finish line and there's another airport over there. Sometimes the tasks come back to the original airport. Sometimes you end up somewhere different. It depends on the task. But as you can see, there's like turn points here. Dotted all around and you have to get to each one of these. and um, you get around the course. Now these are all listed here, turn points, and they've got the GPS locations, but that's all fearfully complicated. What you can actually do is you just go in here and you click on uh, Glider Course and you download the uh, FMS file. Uh, where do I want to put this? Um, I'm giving explain. Glider Tasks, here we go. Let's stick that in there. Okay, so I've downloaded my task uh, as a file. Show in folder. Here's the task. So open that up. And here's my uh, task, Glider Course Lake Tahoe FMS. So I'm going to actually copy that over to my. This is my X Plane folder. I'm going to go into Output. And I'm going to go into FMS Plans. And here's all my Glider Courses. So I'm just going to go grab this and stick it in there. And I already have it in here, so um, yeah, we'll just replace it, whatever. So there we are, we have our Glider FMS, uh, a Glider Lake Tahoe FMS plan. So that's all set up. So the next thing we don't want to do is open up the simulator. All right, got the sim booted up. So first thing first is to figure out our airport. That's uh, November Victor 33. November Victor 33. Okay. I'm going to wait on customizing the runway length because I don't know which way the weather's going yet. So let's set up our weather next. So I'm going to go into customize and we're going to go to manually configured. And the first thing I'm going to do is delete all this stuff and we're going to create our own weather. So we go in here and we look down and we see wind uh, 3000 feet, 100 degrees, 14 knots. Okay. Wind 3000 feet. 100 degrees, 14 knots. Boom. Okay, that's our first wind layer. We have another wind layer here, 10,000 feet, 75 degrees, 16 knots. So let's add that. So 10,075, 16. A few cumulus clouds at uh, 10,000. Okay, so let's add that. Have a cloud layer. A few cumulus. Probably is already 10,000. 10,000. Very good. And the thermals. Okay. Um, okay. Thermals are 4,000 feet, 9%, 800 feet per minute. So 4,900. Okay, pretty good. And I'm going to crank up my visibility because I want it to be a nice clear day. 
and uh, that's it basically so there's our weather now we'll note for the weather direction here, uh, the wind direction. It's coming from the uh, basically from the east blowing to the west. So we kind of want to bear that in mind. Going east to west. So when we go into our uh, airport here, we're going to choose a runway that's kind of going that same direction so we can take off into the wind. So the wind is coming from the east blowing to the west. So we're going to choose runway 07 in this case. And that should set us up properly. All right, so um, let's have a quick another look at this. Now some of these uh, tasks, are, you're better off starting with a winch launch, other ones you're better off starting with a, uh, a tow plane, depending on how high you want to get up. I'm going to do a winch launch, because this is really close to the mountains it looks like. So as soon as we take off we should be able to just fly to those mountains really quickly, so... I don't think it says anything about... Yeah, the only stipulation is here is, um, there's a rule. Uh, the start turn point, the start turn point, maximum altitude is 7,000 feet, so... I think we're starting off pretty high here already, but uh, yeah, 4,800 and something, so as long as we don't go over 7,000 feet before we get our start turn point, we should be fine according to the rules here. I mean, you don't really have to abide by that, but it depends on how closely you want to follow the original poster's rules. Alright, so we're going to do a winch launch here. So let's go to uh, pick up our glider here. Uh, where do I go? Gliders, okay, I'm going to use this... Uh, new version of the ASG 29B21, the 3D VR version. I don't have VR, but uh, it's got some new bells and whistles out like. But I'm going to go down here to customize, and then I'm going to go into glider start. And I've got a choice of a tow plane or winch launch. I'm going to run with the winch. And the time of day? Um, middle of the day sounds good to me, so let's start our flight. All right, we have the uh, simulator booted up, booted up here using X winch. Uh, we're going to be doing a winch launch, and why not? All right, uh, the other thing I want to talk to you about is a some way to actually see the uh, the course as you're flying it. Um, in my case, I really like this app called uh, Little Nav Map. So um, I'm going to open up my FMS uh, Open Flight Plan here, and I'm going to look for where is it? Uh, Lake Tahoe, Lake Tahoe uh, course that we downloaded. Open that, and here it is in my uh, Little Nav Map. So this shows me everything I need to know about the course. It's like there's a start position, how far the bearings and all that stuff. But best of, best of all, I can see my position of my aircraft on the map, which of course is super useful. So um, I can kind of see where I'm doing and where I'm at and where I'm going and all that sort of good things. So um, yeah, if you don't have a little nav map or you're running on one monitor, for example, I mean, I'm not going to obviously fly with this thing stuck in the middle of my monitor here. I'll put it over. I got a monitor over to the the right over here, and I got one on the left too, but uh, you can run this on a different monitor, or you can stick it in the corner of your monitor like this, you know, and try to fly with that. You've got options. Um, there are other ways of uh, looking at maps. Um, uh, AV tab is one that comes to mind. Um, I, uh, there's a bunch of different ways you can look at different maps. Uh, XC Soar and Top Hat are other ways you can look at your, um, your course here. But uh, I'm just going to run with uh, this. And you don't have to use that, but uh, let me show you another thing you can do. So, for example, if you're running VR or something and you don't want any map thing, you know, messing up your frame rate or, you know, what the, you can uh, gonna hop into the cockpit here. What is this? And if you, uh, if you download a glider that has a glide computer in it, which this one just happens to, this is the... Uh, ASW29 by B21. Uh, this one actually has been updated a little bit. Uh, it's got some VR uh, enhancements and some other fun stuff by uh, Joe. Uh, I'll put the link to it in the description. Um, but the, you can also get a version of the, uh, the stock ASK21 with um, also has a Glide computer in it, I believe. So let me show you the Glide computer. So you can hit load here. And here's all my courses in my FMS uh, folder in Xplane. So I'm going to choose Lake Tahoe. I keep calling Lake Tahoe, don't I? Lake Tahoe. Okay, open FMS. And now it shows all the waypoints and everything, which is just super useful. It's a little like loading um, your flight plan in, in the, uh, the you know the, the Garmin uh, instruments that come with a lot of uh, Xplane, um, you know, the flight computer. This is a glide computer uh, specifically for gliders, so. So we're going to page over to the main page here, and you show uh, the first waypoint, which is over here, start. 
and it actually gives me a little marker showing me which direction the um, the uh, the next waypoint is. It's 1.2 miles away in well, back that direction. So because of this, I don't really need a map, which is kind of nice. For the f for the sake of this video, though, I'm going to put my little nav map in the, on the on the side of the screen here, so you can kind of follow and see where I'm going. Anyway, enough babble. Let's uh, get this thing in the air and get flying here. We're going to do the task. I'm not going to do the whole task here. Let's try to keep this video short, but I'll kind of give you a couple of ideas how this how this uh, glide computer works. And uh, all right, so um, I'm not going to go through all the stuff you need to do to fly a glider, but uh, I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to uh, change this to uh, total energy instead of the auto thing. Uh, I'm not going to worry about the McCready setting, and I'm going to turn on the volume a little bit on the Vario for your sakes. All right, let's get in the air. Cable is on and secure. You have a weak link. All clear above, behind, and in front. Pick up flag. It's doing its thing. If you notice this guy sounds a lot like me, it's because it sounds a lot like me. All out. And here we go. So my flaps. And up we go. Alright, let's try to get as much height out of this as we can. Going up. Alright, we're starting to round out at the top here. Coming down, and we're gonna release. Right. My flaps away, and I immediately turn around and head to the mountains. You see, on here you can see by where my way, waypoint is. It's off in this direction, so I'm gonna start heading for that. And make a turn here, heading off towards the mountains here. It all up. All right, so I'm going to head to the uh, get this little yellow blob here, line it up with the uh, little tick there, and that, that means I'm flying directly towards the first waypoint. I would be if I can get this right here. It's actually, if you look at the mountains here, it's uh, it's actually up in the uh, it's up on that hill a little bit there. So I'm going to have to do some climbing now. This also shows me the wind direction, which right now is showing 16 knots right from behind, which means it's blowing right at that hill in front of me, which is perfect because it uh, means you need a lot of lift when we get there. So I'm going to set up to kind of do some turns here once we get into the lift. So I'm going to try to fly along the face of the, uh, the hill here and we should start here in some lift. Anyway, it is. My flaps back a little bit. And we're going to kind of work our way up this hill here. I'm going to just do some S turns back and forth. Trying to fly at the uh, most efficient speed and all that stuff, but I'm not going to teach you how to fly gliders right now, but I just kind of want to show you the task. So, so we're going up nicely right now. We're still half a mile from the first turn point. Alright, so I'm going to turn around here and go back across the face again. Beautiful day of gliding. Yeah, it's nice to be able to set your own weather for this, but a lot of times I come out here and do my do the real weather and see if I can uh, see how I do with these tasks doing that, because you know it's different every day. But if you're gonna run one of these tasks, you should probably uh, set up the weather the way the uh, task designer uh, specified it, otherwise you're just gonna be miserable, you're not gonna have a good time. So going up really nicely now. So see, we're, we're probably going to hit the uh, task. Looks like we're going to hit the uh, first waypoint right here. Zero, one. Perfect. Okay, let's go on to the... I'm going to press this little plus button here. Go to the next waypoint. And that is uh, 16 miles away in that direction. So we're going to fly up along this ridge towards the north, it looks like. <laughs>
Okay, we're almost at our next turn point here, about 1.8 miles to go. See on the map here, we're almost there. Let's zoom into that a little bit. And I gained a ton of altitude, so I'm like nice and high above the valley down here. Which is very good. And I'm on top of the ridge here, which is good, because it looks like we're going to have to turn and head uh, inland here. So we're still heading, we're still following our little marker here. So the only old lot, keeping that in front of us. And we're getting about one mile to go. We should be hitting that soon. And I can also see on my uh, little nav map over here, you see I can, I can see where the marker is. But again, you don't have to have this, but it definitely helps. Plus also it lets you see the topography of the, of the uh, land here, so you can see where all the mountains are and stuff, which is very helpful. Or you can just look out the window, which is good too. So, um, yeah, we're heading off in that direction after this, so I have to kind of get ready for that. All right, zero three, almost there. So I'm going to turn this way a little bit. Zero two. Now, you don't have to be exact. You don't have to hit it exactly. I'm getting it to within one nautical mile. I'm going to call that close enough. Go to the next waypoint. All right, so our next one is 18 miles off in this direction. So we're going to make the marker up up here and it's that away apparently so I'm gonna set for sort of set my flaps for cruise here and kind of get myself efficient because it doesn't look like we're gonna have any lift for a little while I guess we could bounce off some of these uh, ridges and you can see with the wind direction indicator here again the wind is at our rear 16 knots and it's gonna change as we get higher because we uh, did set up two wind layers uh, I believe all right, so we should, I'm expecting some sink here um, as we pass over this uh, the leeward side here. Although it might have just hopped into a thermal. Okay, now, yeah, you see now we got lots of sink right now. So I'm going to drop the nose a little bit so I can get through this, get some speed up here, crank up the speed a bit, get out of that. And I'm going to head because I'm going downwind. I'm going to head for the next highest hill, which is probably this one over here, and I'm going to work off this ridge here. But um, that's the kind of int int interesting part about running tasks is, yes, the, guy, um, the author of this will actually give you the, uh, you know, the waypoints to follow, but some of the best tasks have very few waypoints and they kind of like leave it up to you about where you want to go. They don't like, you know, they don't outline every single little tiny place to go. It's like, okay, you just go in this direction and you figure out how you want to get there, which is kind of nice. I kind of like that. but. You know, it's a, if you're just beginning something, you know, there are other tasks out there that have lots of little points in it, and it, it makes it a little simpler to know where to go, because right now, if I go the wrong way, I'm going to be in trouble. I could get stuck out here, so. But that that's the challenge, and that's what makes things interesting. So, I think you get the idea here. Um, oops. Right over here. There we go. So, um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that, that's basically task flying, so um, I'm not going to fly this entire task right now to uh, show you, but uh, it's rather long, I think it's like an over an hour this task, so there's shorter ones and there's longer ones. So as I said, the links will be in the description, um, you know, where to find the tasks and uh, other various things, and um, if you want to give this a try, uh, please do, and uh, you know, comment in, in the comments and let me know how, how you did. And, um, you know, if you want to make some tasks, if you think you're experienced enough to do that, um, we would love to, like, uh, try out your tasks. So, uh, you know, but fly a few of these first and uh, see what other people have done and give it a try. And, you know, maybe you've got some real-world tasks. You fly at your, uh, your real glider port and whatnot. And, uh, you know, we'd love to see that. The more, more of these tasks, the better, because I think it really does add a lot to the uh, X-Plane gliding. It gives you a reason to go up in the glider and, uh, you know, and have some fun doing this. So. Alrighty, well thanks for watching my video, I uh, hope you enjoyed that, and uh, subscribe if you like my stuff, give me a thumbs up, I really appreciate that, and uh, please let me know what you think. Take care, and thanks for watching.